Right now on five on your side at 10. Snow and rain. What's next as this system moves through the St. Louis area? Only on five on your side. Startling video of a crash involving a St. Louis police cruiser. Its sirens were blaring, its lights flashing. Tonight, our I team uncovers the law officers may have broken. And just hours ago, tensions run high while discussing public safety in St. Louis. Please, please listen to me. Well, please listen to me. The issues where city leaders and citizens don't see eye to eye. We start tonight under a weather alert. The Weather First team is tracking a mix of rain and snow falling across the bi-state. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. Right now, what's falling from the sky depends on where you live. We have our storm tracker out in St. Charles County as we keep an eye on the roads for you tonight. But first, let's get straight over to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell for the latest information on the storm's track and timing. Scott. You know, we've had some rain, we've had some snow. If you go north and west of St. Louis, that's where you're more likely to have that ground white right now with snow upwards of a couple of inches in a few places, especially parts of Warren Lincoln up into Pike County and St. Charles. Right now we're looking on 70 traffic is rolling along eastern parts of St. Charles County versus western parts of St. Charles County kind of different there and that's been the case here just going across the region from east to west you run into that snow. So east and southeast of St. Louis, it's been mainly rain. This is a mix of rain and snow in the metro area. And at times you have some pretty good sized snowflakes falling across parts of Madison County, even into North St. Louis County. We've seen them from time to time, but not a lot in terms of accumulation. And the back edge of this first shield is sliding to the northeast with some additional development down there towards Rolla. Here's the important thing. Temperatures all across the area are above freezing right now, with the exception of Litchfield at 32. So for the most part, roads, while it's snowing and doing so at that pretty intense clip, tend to get a little slushy or covered. But then we basically start the melting process again once the snow lets up in intensity. And it's let up in intensity out around Lambert. Not a lot showing up right now. A mix of light rain and snow and temperatures actually will start to climb. We think a few degrees overnight, so rain and snow will continue more snow to the north and west one to three inches. That's pretty much what you have. Don't think we're going to get much more tonight. Snow will be changing to rain as we head into the hours after midnight and tomorrow's some morning rain showers for all of us and then we'll switch back to an area of snow tomorrow afternoon along with some gusty winds. More on that in a few minutes, Mike. And a blanket of snow tonight in Troy, Missouri. While a lot of that snow is melting on the pavement, a slushy mess is causing some issues on the roads. And both MoDOT and IDOT have crews out. Five on your side, Robert Townsend and photojournalist Don Galloway are out in the storm tracker tonight in St. Charles County. So Robert, how is it looking where you are? Hey there, Kelly, you know, right now we are still seeing that rain slushy snow mix out here in St. Charles County. Let me tell you this about an hour ago, we left downtown St. Louis, hopped on Interstate 70 West and first rode into this wintry mix. Initially it was light, but then it got extremely thick and started falling fairly quickly. You can see light wet snow on grassy areas out here. Now MoDOT and IDOT crews again, they're also keeping a close eye on the road conditions. Both are ready for whatever blows our way tonight. And they tell me again on Friday, they are bracing for potentially a much bigger winter storm that may cover the roads, overpasses in the entire region with snow. If needed, their road crews will put in 12 hour shifts plowing the major roads, interstates, of course, the highways and overpasses on both sides of the river. But again, right now at this 10 o'clock hour, we can tell you that you are looking at on again, off again, a rain slushy snow mix along I-70 East from St. Charles County as we head back into St. Louis County. You might say this is the calm before Friday's anticipated storm. I can tell you that the good news is despite these wet conditions, we really haven't seen any weather related car crashes. Of course, if you're heading out tonight, you definitely want to take your time, pay attention to these road conditions and just be extremely safe. We're live in St. Charles County. I'm Robert Townsend in the storm tracker. All right. Thank you, Robert and Don. Remember, you can get the latest weather first forecast anytime. Just text the word weather to 314-425-5355 and we'll send it to your phone. You can also stream the latest forecast on 5 Plus. It is free to download on your Roku, Fire or Apple TV. And the Today in St. Louis team will be here starting at 4 a.m. with the latest forecast 
and road conditions. Tonight, a panel of St. Louis City leaders address public safety, taking questions from the community. The room was packed and filled to room was packed and it filled two overflow rooms. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski just got back from that meeting and brings us details on several topics that were discussed tonight. Laura. Mike, the conversation got very heated at times and they weren't able to get to everyone's questions, but public safety leaders did give some important updates on daily issues affecting everyone. St. Louis Public Safety Director Charles Coyle says they've made some big improvements to the 911 system. Last year they were down 50 dispatchers and on Monday he says they are only down 16 dispatchers. We now are ex taking calls. We have a national standard of within 10 seconds to answer 90% of our calls. This time last year we were answering in the upper 50 and 60%. While St. Louis Police Chief Robert Tracy says they are still down 300 police officers to respond to those calls, overall violent crime is down and have nearly reached a 10-year low on homicides. And the homicides number was 158 this year. That's progress. That's not a celebration. That's, that's way too many uh, homicides that we're having. Some of that success he attributed to a good working relationship with St. Louis Circuit Attorney Gabe Gore. If you have an environment in which people believe that they can commit violent crimes with impunity, you're going to have more violent crimes. So I, I do think that our office stepping in and effectively prosecuting violent crime has had a direct impact in saving lives. Gore says since hiring 44 people to the staff, they've been able to more effectively work through the backlog of over 6,700 cases and start a new diversion program. We're going to have people going into diversion without ever having to participate in the criminal justice system and thereby um, avoiding the harms that can be caused by getting engaged with the criminal justice system, having to plead guilty to a felony. President of the Board of Aldermen, Megan Green, made a commitment tonight that everyone who asked a question and provided an email will get an answer to those questions. She also invited everyone to the Board of Aldermen meetings and hearings where she encouraged them to share their concerns from tonight. New tonight, we are learning more about a crash that caused a police SUV to roll over several times in downtown St. Louis. Exclusive footage of the Sunday afternoon crash shows the officer never slowed down before clipping another car. Tonight, the I-team's Christine Byers is learning what the law and experts say about how first responders should approach intersections. Here's what we now know about the crash that sent this police SUV tumbling along Olive near police headquarters Sunday. The department confirms the officer who was driving has less than a year on the force. His partner has one year. They were working an overtime detail downtown and rushing to a call for an officer in need of aid about four miles away in the Central West End. When they get those calls, they can't be of assistance to that officer if they never make it. John Wetzel is a former sheriff from Oklahoma. His wife and two-year-old daughter were killed by a fellow officer chasing a motorcycle in 1980. When a law enforcement officer ran a stop sign at 100 miles an hour and hit the car broadside, um, I, was, I was dispatched to that scene to assist at the scene, and that's how I learned. Ever since, he has devoted his career to training first responders on best driving practices. He now leads the Traffic Safety Committee for the National Sheriff's Association. When you prepare an approach to enter uh, an intersection, a uh, vehicle needs to be slowed where if an approaching vehicle from a side street um, uh, enters the intersection, you'll be able to, to stop and to avoid a collision. Even Missouri state law requires it. It states first responders can proceed past a red or stop signal or stop sign, but only after slowing down as may be necessary for safe operation. Violating that law is a class A misdemeanor. It's as much for the uh, safety of the officer as it is for the citizens. The police department confirmed today that the driver of the car that struck the officer's SUV refused medical treatment at the scene. So did the drivers of two other cars the police SUV struck. The officers were released with non-life-threatening injuries. We lose far too many officers every year to motor vehicle crashes and uh, too often those are caused by uh, often by actions that officers could have prevented. For the I-Team, Christine Byers, five on your side. 
And the police department did not answer the I-team's questions about the department's policy when it comes to approaching intersections. They also did not say whether the officers were wearing seat belts or how fast they were traveling. If you have a tip for Christine and the five on your side I-team, you can leave a voice message at 314-444-5231 or send an email to tips at ksdk.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. Tonight we're hearing from Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft just hours after police had him walk out of his Jefferson City home with his hands up. Turns out he was a victim of swatting. Ashcroft tells us he got a call from police last night telling him they were outside after receiving a call for a shooting at his home. They didn't know if it was real or not at that time. I didn't know. I mean, they'd said they were the police, but I didn't know if it was someone just playing games with me or what was going on. Swatting is when someone makes a prank call to police telling them to send the SWAT team to a specific address. And there's been a rise in swatting incidents at the homes of public officials. New signs could be put up along Coldwater Creek in North St. Louis County warning residents about possible radioactive waste. Signs already warn people not to play, swim, or fish in the creek. But the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers say newer signs will let residents know where to go for accurate information and resources. The creek has been contaminated for decades with radioactive waste from the Manhattan Project during World War II.